Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to uh, this meeting. I'm Brendan Call. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer, Executive Vice President for the Cincinnati USA Regional Chamber. I'm also honored to be a board member for the Southwest Ohio Regional Transit Authority. I think I'm in my seventh year on the board, um, but it has been a true uh, pleasure to work with the team at uh, SORTA and Metro. <laughs> Um, for the last five years, as many of you know, the Chamber has dedicated a significant amount of time and energy to focus on solving some of our region's most complicated transportation challenges. Um, we did this uh, not just because we wanted to have uh, the best transit system in the country, though we do want to have a great transit system in the country, but this is crucial to our strategy of attracting talent, building a vibrant community, and having a strong economy here in Cincinnati and in our region. Our members at the chamber, uh, from the moment uh, Jill uh, Meyer, who is our president and CEO and has been a visionary behind all of this work, uh, when she started the chamber, she met with board members and chamber members, people all over the region, and they said, access to transportation is a huge challenge for our employees, uh, our potential employees, and for our ability to hire and retain talent. Um, it is not just about moving around the people who are here. It's about when we bring somebody here from Chicago or someone here from San Francisco who might choose to work in Cincinnati. And the first thing they say is, I don't have a car. Am I going to be able to get around? So building a transit system is, is, uh, that works is crucially important. Over the last 18 months, as you know, uh, we led efforts to pass issue 22 and issue 7 which was the ballot levy plan uh, that voters approved by 961-ish votes uh, that allows SORTA to implement the Reinventing Metro plan um, that you're gonna hear more about today. It also, by the way, for those of you who have been paying attention, funds in a dramatic way uh, an infrastructure investment in our county, which is desperately needed. And you'll start to see soon more of the details on how that's gonna work. Um, the campaign was uh, fun. Uh, and uh, challenging uh, and incredible, uh, thanks to the team of people who helped put it together, my colleague Pete Metz, my colleague uh, Taylor Liggins, uh, who was at the chamber working on the campaign at the time and now works with SORTA. Um, but the campaign is over and now the hard work begins, which is which SORTA needs to engage with folks across this region to finalize the implementation of the plan that voters approved. You're going to hear from two of the leaders today at SORTA, Daryl Haley, who is our CEO, and Khaled Shamut, who is uh, the head of planning and operation uh, and um, all of the aspects rolling out of the reinventing metro plan. You'll hear from others on the SORTA team as well. Um, please ask questions using the Q&A function on Zoom and Pete will facilitate them throughout the presentation making, you, making sure you can jump in and get questions answered. Um, our goal, uh, we, we were not involved in this to get the levy passed and walk away. Our goal is to make sure that our region has a first class transit system that meets the needs of the community and that works for the thousands of businesses that are currently located near transit and will be located near transit. Uh, it has to work for you and your employees and your feedback in this process is incredibly valuable. Um, last thing I'll say, programs like this are one of the many benefits of being a chamber member. Uh, currently, we have 11 different programs offering cost savings programs for the things you do every day at your business. Our leadership center offers professional development. Our workforce innovation center is partnering with businesses to advance the adoption of inclusive practices in their workplace. Um, our government affairs program is out and about working on issues in the city and the county at the state level. And this year we were so proud to help thousands of business as they businesses as they navigated um, what I think might have been the most difficult year uh, in our nation's history when it comes to uh, a, a strange economy and a global pandemic. Um, that said, if you have not renewed your chamber membership for 2021, uh, the team at the chamber has just done a great job making all of this possible. Um, if you're considering becoming a chamber member, please connect with us after the session. You can visit CincinnatiChamber.com. All the information is there. And with that, I'm happy to be done and to turn it over to my friend and colleague, Daryl Haley, the CEO and general manager of the Southwest Ohio Regional Transit Authority. Daryl. Thank you, Brendan. Hello, I'm Daryl Haley, CEO of Metro. Thank you for joining us today to hear more about the reinventing Metro plan. This is a really exciting time for our region. Uh, and, and we are uh, truly thankful to Hamilton County voters who supported the passage of issue seven. The rollout of the reinventing Metro plan will bring with it much needed infrastructure improvements. It will increase the economic vibrancy of our region and provide a world-class transit center, a system for our community. 
Today, you'll hear a presentation about all the exciting changes you can expect, specifically how it will work, um, how it will connect uh, more people to jobs and better paying jobs throughout our region, how it will help businesses attract and retain talent and connect riders to retail, healthcare, and education. Again, we thank you for helping reinvent Metro and reimagine transit in our region. Um, now I'd like to turn it over to Pete Metz. Thanks, Daryl. And uh, I'm just gonna do a quick reminder before Haled dives in to the, the real details of this. We wanna facilitate Q&A throughout, uh, both by answering questions uh, written uh, in the Q&A section, but also having an opportunity to ask Daryl and Haled and the team at Sorta to, to get into more detail and things that are most interesting to you. So use the Q&A uh, box for, for question and answer. Uh, I, I'm monitoring both that in the chat, but the Q&A is where we'd like folks to, to drop questions as we go. Uh, we'll, we'll read them out and, and have folks answer them. If you have more detailed questions, uh, you can see that you can email reinventingmetro at go-metro.com. You can follow Metro on social media to, to get additional questions. You'll also get, uh, we are recording this presentation. So we'll send a, a follow-up link out afterwards for folks who, if they wanna go back and uh, make sure they got something uh, in their head right or, or, or need additional information. So with that, Halet, I'll turn it over to you, but excited for the conversation, excited to facilitate uh, some Q&A afterwards. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, Daryl and uh, Brendan. And thank you all for being on, on this call, which is really important for us to share these, um, um, this plan with you and also to hear your, your comments uh, as well. Let me just start first by talking about what is really reinventing Metro plan. I mean, it's been in the news for the past year and a half at least, you know, and people have been talking about reinventing Metro plan and so on. But let me just put it in perspective. Reinventing Metro plan is really about driving the economic development in Hamilton County. Uh, it is about improving mobility for all. Uh, reinventing Metro Plan is about attracting new businesses and employers to our county. Um, it is to provide access to more and higher paying jobs, as we'll see in a few examples in, in the next few slides. And certainly, um, it's about improving the local and regional quality of life. And by doing all of that, we're trying to expand the regional connectivity of our um, system here. So really, in a nutshell, this is what reinventing Metro Plan is, is all about. It's about the economic development, bringing new jobs here and, and employers and providing access to these jobs and improving the quality of life. Next slide, please. Now, in order to do that and accomplish these uh, great goals and objectives, we have to improve our transit system. And you know there are different ways of improving the transit system, but in our case here, we really have to tackle the frequency of our buses so that we have more buses coming and, you know, uh, in, in an hour. Um, that's really critical. That's probably one of the top things that customers ask for is frequency. Uh, we realize that on most of our routes, buses come once every about 30 minutes or so on average. We need to improve that. We need buses to be, to, to be coming, you know, sooner than that and faster than that so that individuals can complete their trips in a timely manner, can connect to their connecting via, uh, bus um, in, in, a, in a better way uh, as well. Amenities is also very critical, providing the benches, shelters, the signs, as well as the environment around the, 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 the bus stop, such as uh, the sidewalks, curb cuts, and so on. This is all important uh, for our customers to provide a safe environment for those who are waiting but also you know, a place where you know, it protects them from the elements um, and just you know, to be uh, comfortable waiting for their uh, connecting bus. So we're also working on that to provide more of these uh, throughout our uh, service. Span of service is really basically at what time this, the service starts in the morning and what time it ends in the evening. Unfortunately, quite a few of our routes you know, end bit late, I mean, early, um, you know, maybe 11 p.m. around midnight. And that, that's not necessarily enough in certain cases or in certain areas. So we have to improve on the span of service so that buses are running much longer. In some cases, they have to run 24 hours, as you will see um, in the next couple of slides. So that's another element that we're working on improving throughout our system is to provide more service throughout the whole day, as well as on the weekends. And finally, travel time. 
And we do realize that the current system we have is not really an efficient system. Um, in many cases, somebody on the east side who wants to go to the west side, they have to travel all the way to downtown to transfer and then go to west to the west side, which is really not an efficient way of uh, completing uh, a trip. So we're working on that uh, to provide uh, better connectivities, uh, make the trips shorter um, in distance and faster as well, um, so that people can spend their time doing the things they would love to do rather than uh, spending it on uh, the bus or waiting for their buses. Next slide, please. I'm just going to highlight a couple of things here and then move on to the next slide. So in addition to improving um, the level of service, such as frequency, span, um, you know, and uh, amenities and so on, there are other factors that are also important to our customers, such as convenience on board the buses. And we're working on that. Currently, half of our fleet um, is equipped with free Wi-Fi and charging ports. We're working on uh, equipping the entire fleet by the end of this year. Uh, and that's something that's really important for our customers. So they can ride and be productive while they're riding the, the buses. Um, for the last two bullets, <clears throat> I'll wait till the next two slides to talk about this in a little bit more detail. But basically, in addition to improving the current um, type of service that we're providing, which we call fixed route, which is these big buses, we're also looking at alternative uh, modes of transportation to make the entire transit system more efficient in, in uh, Hamilton County. And that's where you know, the, on, the demand response as well as the BRT or bus rapid transit come and play. And I'll be talking about this in the next couple of slides. Uh, next slide, please. So the, the, the fixed route uh, service is really great um, in certain areas, on certain corridors. And you, know, you see it in all, all, all over the country in almost every city. However, it has its limitations. Uh, and perhaps in some cases, in certain neighborhoods, there isn't a great demand to justify providing fixed route service, but there is enough demand that it really requires some kind of a transit service. And that's where mobility on demand or demand response uh, service comes to, to play. In other cases, there may be high demand, but th these big buses cannot serve that area just because of the type of the streets, uh, buses cannot negotiate these streets or you know the turns and so on. So this year we're starting a study that's going to look at um, our area, the Hamilton County, and identify areas, geographical areas or neighborhoods, where this kind of service, the mobility on demand, would be you know a viable option for them. Um, usually these kind of services are applied in areas that may be four square miles, six square mile area or so. And typically we're using, you know, we use smaller type vehicles like cutaways, minivans, and in some cases sedans. Obviously they have to be ADA com uh, compliant. And they come, these type of services come in different flavors. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the details of all of them, but the general notion of it is um, again, it, it's operating in a particular neighborhood. People can call ahead of time, up to at least an hour ahead, make reservations, and a vehicle will come pick them up from their front door and then drop them off at their destination within that geographic area. Um, and at the same time, that service can also connect them with the big bus, you know, with the main routes, so that they can complete their trip outside of that particular neighborhood. Uh, this has been uh, deployed in many cities across across the country with great success, and we we believe that there are many areas in our area here in, in Hamilton County that would greatly benefit from that. Um, it serves sometimes as the uh, first last mile solution. Um, it's great for you know uh, doing you know your neighborhood trips if you're going to the barber or going to visit a friend or to the bank and so on. Uh, and it provides more options for our paratransit customers, as well as to everybody else uh, to be more mobile and take advantage of transit. We expect by early next year to start implementing uh, some, of, some of this service in Hamilton County. So we're, this year we're doing a study uh, that should be complete by the end of the year, and then early next year we'll start implementing that. And, and we're really excited about this. Next slide, please. The other type of uh, service that we're also um, 
will be bringing to, to Hamilton, County, Hamilton County as the bus track for transit. On certain corridors, there is actually quite a bit of demand that the current service or the current buses, you know, current routes are not enough to accommodate that part, you know, that, that uh, high demand. Um, and I'm sure you've, you've all experienced BRT at, you know, other cities and, uh, and, and so on. Um, the, the picture that you see here, you, you can see there's kind of like a concrete barrier separating the bus from traffic. And this is really the best application of the BRT is to physically separate the buses from the traffic. So buses can have their own lane, they can travel much faster and connect the, the passengers uh, to their destinations in a much faster way, making their trip shorter and, and so on. And currently, uh, next slide please. So we have four, thank you. Uh, we have four corridors identified that are good candidates uh, for a BRT service. We will still have you know, to do with our detailed study to identify which two of these four uh, would, be, uh, would receive the BRT first. And, um, and obviously, you know, this is a major project. Uh, there's a lot of involvement from the federal government in these kind of projects, you know, especially from FDA. Um, so it's a multi-year project. The first phase is to do the detailed design and then we have the planning and then the design and then it comes to construction. So the first service may not run before 2026, 2027. Um, but this is, this is a, a, you know, again, a great project for, for our community uh, to connect people in a much faster way as well. Next slide, please. Hey, Hilad, before we jump into the next piece, I just wanted to ask a question that came in through the Q&A about the mobility on demand service. Have you all decided on a fare structure or a, a, a cost to rider for those, or how does that vary based on the, the normal fixed route service? Uh, for that particular uh, service, that's something that we will be discussing uh, with the consultants as part of their uh, effort. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Uh, th thanks for the question, by the way. So just to put certain things in perspective, you know, in terms of all of these improvements that we're talking about, and actually there's still quite a bit that, that you'll see in the next few slides. Um, once reinventing Metro, all of these improvements that we're proposing and we're bringing to, to our community, once they're in place, um, the transit system will, you know, which will provide access to 20,000 more jobs than, than the current uh, system does. And that will total about $850 million in annual wages. So 20,000 more jobs will be accessible by transit. And by accessible, we mean they're within walking distance, which is about usually a quarter mile, which is roughly four minute uh, walking distance. Um, so, and then, and that's really the, probably one of the most exciting things that's gonna happen this year, as early as May 30th of this year, is six routes will start running 24 hours. Uh, again, May 30th of, of, of this year, which means that 50% of the jobs in Hamilton County will have 24 hour bus service. And it is the, the gray buffer that you see on, on the map. And Mark, uh, our planner three, will, uh, service planner three, will, will be talking more about this in, in a second. Uh, but but, but that's, that, that's a great thing that's happening this year. I mean, just imagine 50% of the jobs in Hamilton County will have 24 hour bus service. Next slide, please. All right, so these are the last two slides for me, and then I'm gonna turn it over to, to Mark Saman to talk about the, the, the details. Um, the, um, the, the map that you see here is, uh, shows the jobs in, in Hamilton County. And the darker, the, the blue color is, uh, the more concentration, obviously, of you know, jobs. Um, the, the, there are three colored lines on the map. The gray ones are the rest of the bus, the current bus network. The red lines, six of them, these are the lines that will be running 24 hours starting uh, May 30th this year. And then the three uh, yellow lines um, will see improvements in uh, starting May, uh, not 24 hour service, but they'll see improvement in frequency as well as in span of service. 
Um, but this is just to, to show that as of, you know, in a few months, literally almost three months from now, um, the which jobs areas will be receiving the 24 hour service as well as other improvements um, based on the yellow route. Uh, next slide, please, uh, Pete. And this is showing the improvements planned with year two, so next year, which are indicated in the, you know, in, in green. So by next year, second quarter of next year, everything you see on the map, the gray lines, the red lines, as well as the green lines will be implemented. And you can see how all of these job areas are not only connected, that are connected, but are receiving quite a bit of improved uh, level of service, uh, whether it's 24 hours uh, service, weekend service, frequencies, and so on. And actually there's a lot more to come in year three, four, five, and so on. Um, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to, to Mark just to go over a few um, other uh, pieces of information. Thank you. Thank you, Khalid. Can everybody hear me? All right, so I'm Mark Saman. I'm the service planner three for Cincinnati Metro. And we'll be discussing some of the changes coming your way in the first few years of this plan. So just a quick overview in the first year, which is 2021, we will be expanding nine of our routes. Six of these routes, which are our six busiest routes, will run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And those generally are the Glenway Avenue corridor, Clifton Hamilton corridor, the Vine Street corridor, the Reading Road corridor, the Gilbert Avenue Montgomery Road corridor, and the Madison Road corridor. Three other routes will see some service changes as well. Routes 16 and 20, which run on Winton Road, currently do not run on Sundays. They will begin running on Sundays, providing service to Mount Healthy, as well as Springdale in the Tri-County area. Uh, routes, those routes will also run twice as often on weekdays. <laughs> Route 46 will take one of the branches of Route 43 and will run some more frequent service every day as well to the Center City, Avondale, Spring Grove Village, and Winton Hills area. Next, please. So digging more into the jobs map that Holly showed you before, we've broken this out into a few uh, big industry sectors using the two-digit NAICS code for industry and job classifications. So what you see here are the hubs of manufacturing, transportation and warehousing, and wholesale trade. Uh, job areas, such as in Blue Ash, Springdale, Sharonville, Oakley, Norwood area, St. Bernard and along Spring Grove Avenue, as well as downtown and in Queensgate. Uh, these red routes on the map are the ones that will be running 24 hours a day in the first year. And the orange routes are the ones that will see expanded frequency and be running on Sundays. In the next year, year two, is where we really start to dig into, uh, next slide please, is where we really start to dig into the northern part of the county. So we'll have expanded routes serving Blue Ash, Sharonville, and Springdale um, with the ability to get to that part of the county from more parts of the county. Uh, we'll also see more routes serving the uh, east side, northeast corridor, as well as the 75 corridor and along Kemper Road which is a major job corridor as well. Next slide, please. Here are the uh, hubs for healthcare and social service jobs. So these are hospitals, clinics, um, medical fields, offices, and social service agencies. Uh, these are mainly clustered around the uptown hospital cluster in downtown as well, and where all the different major hospitals in our region are, such as in Anderson, in Kenwood Jewish Hospital, in Montgomery Bethesda North, and Mercy West on the uh, off of 74, as well as some other sites throughout town. So again, the red lines being the 24 hour routes and the orange being the ex uh, expanded service routes. And on the next slide, you can see the second year routes um, matching these areas as well. Next can slide, Mark, please. Can I jump in yeah. with a question from, from someone participating? So the, yeah. there's a, a lot of support for the 24-hour routes, and there's some question about um, 
uh, whether they all originate and end downtown and how the new crosstown routes uh, impact that and the, frequ the, the span of those new crosstown routes. Can you speak a little bit to that? Sure. So these are year one mid-year improvements. These six routes, which have our heaviest ridership and cover the most corridors. Uh, and in future phases, we're looking at not just our existing crosstown routes and how those can be better and serve the serve jobs and healthcare and recreation and shopping. But what our new crosstown routes, especially in the northern, western, and eastern portions of the county, will look like and when they will run. So in future phases, you should be seeing more information on these routes. Um, they you know, none of them are going to be hourly. You know, we'll have some good frequency on these routes. And the span of service will match uh, what we what it needs to be to serve the jobs the best way in these areas. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, so on the uh, next slide, please. Uh, again, here's where you see more service created out in the suburban communities and connecting uh, 71, 75 corridors and hitting some of our suburban hospitals. Uh, on the next slide, it should be the foods, retail, and accommodation jobs. These are more scattered throughout the county, just in business areas. But we do uh, have concentrations, again, in the northern part of the county along Kemper Road, Corridor and 275. Oakley and Norwood, Uptown, Downtown, the Glenway Corridor in the Western Hills, Plaza and Glenway Crossing area, Anderson, Colerain, and most parts of the county. So these will be fairly well served with the new 24-hour routes, um, allowing for people to uh, stay to the end of their shift and not have to leave early or find an expensive way to get home. Um, and in year two, on the next slide, you can see again that the those farther out in the county will have significantly expanded service uh, in that time frame. The final two are final three slides actually. Final two are about uh, education and educational services. So this is a, this is uh, universities, school districts, um, uh, campuses, community colleges. Uh, scattered around Hamilton County. So these will, especially the University of Cincinnati, Xavier University, Cincinnati State Technical College, uh, and UC Blue Ash will see uh, greatly improved service in year one of this plan. And in the second year, on the next slide, uh, those campuses up north, uh, like Great Oaks um, and so on, will see good service in that year, uh, improve service in that year to uh, make better what we already have. So this, the next slide should be the final map showing, uh, these are our, our areas uh, where the high percentage of the population lives in poverty. And that's defined as a household living underneath the federal poverty line for their household size, uh, for this median area, for the median area income in this area. So with the, the, red, the red routes that you see on here are our year one routes, the 24 hour service and increased routes, uh, increased service routes. The green lines are those year two routes and the yellow stars are uh, those job clusters that you've seen on the past eight maps. So e even by phase two, we'll be greatly expanding access to almost every job hub uh, in Hamilton County. With, as well as providing 24 hour service and more cross towns. So uh, we think that this will greatly impact people's ability to get to and from good employment. And we're gonna increase the service even more in years beyond, but this is what you can look forward to. This map is showing some concepts of a, a regional bus network. And so, you know, we sorta serve Hamilton County as our primary service area and we contract with Butler Warren in Claremont County to provide some express service to and from downtown. Um, but this, this is a look at what growth beyond Hamilton County could look like in partnership with these agencies in Butler County and Claremont County, as well as Northern Kentucky. Um, the idea is to have these connection points, which would be uh, or transit stations and hubs where connections between systems can occur. Uh, where we can 
schedule service to meet each other at a good time and meet shift work out, especially up in Butler County and down in Boone County in Northern Kentucky, where a lot of shift work is prevalent. Hey Mark, so, can I can I pause there because there's been some questions in the chat or in the Q and A about yeah. uh, Kentucky service and regional service generally. Daryl, maybe you could speak to the the work that's already been done to talk about fare integration and whatnot uh, on how how these systems will mesh better together already, even before we talk about sort of integrated service levels. Sure, it, it's one of the things that we um, consistently do is we communicate uh, amongst our systems: uh, Butler County, Claremont County, Warren County, and Northern Kentucky. Uh, one of the things that um, came out of those conversations is we have the one singular app now. It's an app where you can uh, schedule your trip, you can plan a trip uh, between Butler County, uh, Metro, and Northern Kentucky Tank. You can pay for that trip all on one app. You can watch all the buses move in real time between those three systems. Um, the coordination between us and Tank, there is a day pass that you can use to ride both systems, tank and metro, as well as a monthly pass that you can use to ride both tank and metro. And as we both move forward in reimagining our transit uh, systems, we're making sure that we'll have time connections so that buses match up for perfect timing so that you can get off of, uh, one system, get on another system to complete your trip. And um, we communicate um, on a regular basis to make sure that what tank is doing in reinventing their system and what Metro is doing in reinventing our system, they work hand in hand for um, for the um, citizens of our community. Thank you. Good. So uh, that's that's what I've got for my portion. Um, in the rest of this presentation, we have. Um, some extra stuff on here and some more maps on those year one routes um, if anyone wanted to see more detail but uh, I think we hit the the overall pretty uh, pretty fairly so great this is a uh, really helpful and reminder if you have questions drop them in the q and I've tried to jump in with a few of them so far but I think this slide that's up is an important one for um, businesses to understand how they can help their employees use transit. Uh, can someone from the SORTA team talk about uh, the various transit commuter benefits programs and, and even ridership opportunity partnerships that exist with businesses, private businesses or um, work that SORTA is thinking about doing to work with businesses who might be near improved transit and trying to help their employees um, use the system in a more meaningful way? So this, this is Daryl. Um, we have several partnerships right now with several businesses in the community. Um, one of the things a lot of businesses don't realize is uh, your transit to and from work can be pre-tax. Um, that's pre-tax for the employer as well as pre-tax for the um, employees. So you can use um, pre your pre-tax dollars to pay for your bus service. There are third-party administrators that will admin administer the, uh, the pre-tax um, programs and it will actually save the businesses money. Um, we'd love to come out and talk to any of your businesses about how those pre-tax um, uh, programs work. And we, we know a number of the um, agencies that actually uh, uh, just, uh, handle the pre-tax piece of that. And we'd love to work with you for that, as well as um, on uh, several businesses, we'd love to come out and talk to your employees about how to catch the bus, um, where to catch the bus from their neighborhood in town, how the bus system works, um, how easy it is to ride the bus and the benefits from the bus, both in, um, in cost savings as well as benefits to the um, environment. Um, we'd love to come out um, to your businesses and sit down and talk to your employees to help them understand how to catch the bus as well as we've done a lot of programs where we will have a week's worth of free rides for a certain um, company so that people can get used to riding the bus, they can understand how to ride the bus and they can experience it for themselves um, for a short period of time uh, to make sure that it works um, works for them. Um, and we'd love to come out and work with any or all of you to help put some of these programs together. And Daryl, if folks want to do that, they should send an email to the Reinventing Metro at go-metro.com account. Perfect. Absolutely. Perfect. So an, another follow-up question that came in was how all of these changes impact the fare structure. So could someone speak to new and proposed fare structures and how that will work? Uh, this is Daryl again. Our board will be voting on a new fare structure. Um, those um, who are very familiar with the bus understand that our fare structure is very complicated. 
today. We are um, getting ready to roll out a new fare structure where it will be a local fare for all local routes, a separate fare for express routes, and those are express routes inside of Hamilton County, and then a third fare for those express routes outside of Hamilton County, Butler, Claremont, and Warren. So all of the local service will be one price. All of the express service inside Hamilton County will be one price. And then of course the uh, outlying county uh, service will be one price. So that will really, really simplify the fare structure as well as um, discounting the day passes. And of course the um, monthly passes, the 30 day rolling passes are currently discounted um, as well as the app. And again, I talked about the app. You can purchase your um, rides on the app. Um, you can go down to our sales office to buy passes as well as the TVMs around town. Um, but it's, um, it, it's gonna be really exciting. It's gonna take this very complicated fare structure that we have and make it really simple. If your bus doesn't get on the expressway, it just drives through the city. All routes will be the same price. If it comes from inside the county, gets on the expressway, comes into town, it will be a separate price. And then everything from outside the county will be a third price. So we're really excited about that. And the new fare structure should roll out on the 1st of April. And you can also go to, um, to our website at go-metro um, and see um, about the um, fare structure simplification as well. Carol, I might just jump in there as a board member because we talked about this in our committee this week. Um, I, I, I believe you, I didn't hear you say anything about transfers, but I may have missed it because I think tr transfers go away, right, within the county. So what, what, what we're recommending that the board will be voting on on Tuesday, uh, the local routes will be $2. The day pass will be $4. So if you're making a round trip um, and you were used to using a transfer, you were paying $1.75 plus 50 cents for a transfer for one way and the same way the other way. And that day pass was 450. That day pass, the recommendation is to drop that day pass to $4. So you actually get a discount um, in using that round trip. If you're a person that are only uh, going one way, you'll be able to buy a five ride ticket that will have a free transfer embedded in it. Or if you're using the app, the app one ride tickets will have a free transfer embedded within the, um, within the ride. So again, there are some discounts for those who are doing um, uh, round trips, as well as discounts for those who are transferring. Um, the transfer transfers being free. You will no longer be, about, be able to buy a transfer on the bus, but we are uh, caring for those people who are going one way by selling a five ride ticket with transfers embedded, as well as the app will have a free transfer embedded as well. Awesome. Mark, can I ask you, because I know there's some questions about the, um, so, so there may be some questions about route specific changes. Can I ask you to go through, I know you've got some slides on specific routes. Can you maybe just go through one route or, or two routes to show folks the granular level frequency change, et cetera, and span change so they can, can see that and um, get a better understanding? We've obviously seen the big maps, but can you zoom in on one or two routes? Sure. Um... Let's do route 16, actually, because for most of our routes, the change is pretty simple. It's just a 24 hour service. But for routes 16 and 20, um, we're, you can see that this route, this is route 16. It goes from downtown along Liberty to Spring Grove, uh, serves Camp Washington, South Cumminsville, Northside uh, to Spring Grove Village, Winton Hills, Finneytown in the Springfield Township, um, and then ends in Mount Healthy at Hilltop Plaza. So this route runs six days a week currently, weekdays and Saturday. And it runs from about 4.30 in the morning on weekdays to 9.30 p.m. and seven to eight-ish on Saturdays uh, with a pretty, high, pretty low frequency level. So this route comes every 55 minutes during the day and every 70 minutes evenings and Saturdays. So the proposed uh, change for this is that the route itself does not change. It still runs on the same alignment and serves all the same stops. But on weekdays, it will be extended until 10.30 p.m. On Saturdays, it will be extended until 10 p.m. and start earlier. And on Sundays, it will run at, from 7 to 7. And uh, during the daytime on those weekdays, the frequency drops to once every 30 minutes. So that's a near doubling of frequency along this route. And the weekend's frequencies uh, will be hourly. So that's an example of uh, this year one change we're making to this route. 
Thank you. And and while you were while you were zooming in on that, we did get a question um, about the the mobility on demand type service. When you think about the technology associated with that, how are you thinking about uh, autonomous and connected vehicles and, and sort of the future of the fleet? Uh, can can you speak to to what that might look like, what you're thinking, what you're seeing in other peer agencies, or something that even might be studied by the consulting team who's working on that? Yes, uh, part of the uh, one of the requirements in the uh, scope of work is for the consultant to also make recommendations on how the service is to be uh, implemented, what type of technology technologies to be uh, adopted as well. So that's certainly something on the table. Uh, OKI is certainly interested in something you know similar to to such implementation, and we'll be coordinating all of that with OKI and the other entities as well. Um, we're not really excluding anything right now. We're just, you know, waiting for the study to commence and then, you know, see what the out outputs are. Um, it'd be great if we can do something like that as early as next year. Um, I doubt that it, it, it may happen next year, you know, to use driverless vehicles, uh, but you, you never know. But uh, all, all options are on the table. Thanks, Holly. It will, it will definitely be done with um, the, the on-demand service will be done with something other than a 40-foot bus. Be much smaller, things like vans, maybe even sedans. Um, and we're also looking at electric vehicles as well. Daryl, that actually leads to another question I had is, is the fleet and the change of the fleet. I know there's a, a big component of this is uh, modernizing the, the bus system we have with, with newer buses. Can you talk a little bit about uh, alternative fuels and the, the future of uh, electrification in the fleet and what might be in the works there? Well, we've been working with Duke Energy as, as well as OKI and several other entities um, in, in the region to move towards some electric vehicles. One of the things we're really excited about is our new transit center that we just opened um, in Northside actually has electric uh, charging ports for cars for people who choose to park there. And we also look to the future. When we built Northside, we ran the conduit so when we do have electric vehicles, those vehicles can charge there. So we're very, very interested and moving towards electric vehicles um, in, in the near future. Um, we are looking uh, towards uh, sedans, vans, different uh, uh, alternative means of transporting people. It depends on the type of service and the area of service that it's in, but we, uh, we are open to all different types of, um, of solutions um, in our region. Thank you. One other question that um, I know has come to mind previously is obviously, the nature of work changes over time, where businesses are located changes over time. Uh, if a business is growing or if there's new economic development happening here, how, how will you be thinking going forward about um, both implementing the, what exists in reinventing Metro, but also uh, being flexible and nimble to, to solve new opportunities or new challenges for businesses? And how should a business who's looking to grow and need additional transit service um, work with you to get that done? Um, any new any business that's moving into our area or, or moving or doesn't have service today, um, we would love for them to reach out for us to start to have some conversation. Um, it's better for us to be in the conversation up front. If you know there's something going on um, with your business, um, you're adding um, employees or you're moving, you're opening a new site, um, please reach out to us early um, as we plan our bus stops and as we plan our transit centers and our, and our shelters and whatnot. We'd love to be a part of the uh, conversation. We'd also like to be a part of the conversation um, with your employees as an alternate, me alternate means of transportation to and from their jobs. Um, as the um, community gets a little younger and, and the um, younger community are more interested in being car free or, or less cars than you know maybe my generation, uh, we wanna make sure we're uh, providing an option that suits their lifestyle. Um, and if we can get in those conversations and get those feedbacks, We'll make sure we're in the right places at the right time. But at any time, please reach out. Um, we'd love to come and talk to all of you as we build. One of the things that we've done as we've uh, begin rolling out the reinventing Metro, um, we've gone to the community and shared with the community all of the new um, all the new service that we plan to roll out. But we're also going out to them to get their feedback to make sure we're meeting our customers where they need to be met, that we're meeting their needs. So we'll make adjustments as adjustments need to be made to make sure that we're providing the service that the community um, needs. And um, yeah, there's our, um, our um, websites up 
um, send us an email, give us a call. We'd love to come out and talk to each and every one of you. Great, thank you. I'm gonna, I've seen a number of questions coming in the chat. I think we've answered uh, most or all of them. If you have a, fi a final question, uh, feel free to drop it now. Um, otherwise, I just wanna say thank you uh, to the Sorta team for your partnership and all of this. We've been working for, uh, I would, literally years on on taking this from vision to reality. And so we're excited to, to be the connector between all of our members and their employees and the new service that you're going to be putting on the street. And so we look forward to uh, to getting out and, and riding this new service, helping our, our members uh, and their employees ride this new service to, to grow their business and, and connect to more jobs. So I just want to say thank you. I'm not seeing anything else come in through the chat. Thanks to the the folks who, who joined in today, as, as I mentioned, there'll be a follow-up email with a link to uh, to this recording, additional contact information, and some survey information that you can give feedback to both the chamber and to SORTA on the plans and, and presentations just like this. So thank you so much for, for participating today. Thank you, Pete, and thank you for the chamber um, for this opportunity. Uh, we look forward to um, serving the community. Thank you all. Thank you.